Everything homemade! Hey everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and I know I haven't done a cooking video for a while so today I'm going to show you how I make my famous breaded chicken legs. And before I dive into that, I just want to mention that I'm also an author. If you like adventure or if you like action, romance, then definitely check out my books. They're listed at the end of the video. I also would like to mention that I have an email that is set up just for author related emails. It's author Rita Peterson at hotmail.com. So if you would like an email notification on any new release that I have coming out, definitely send me an email. This is not to spam you daily. This is not to spam you weekly or monthly. I will only send you an email when a new book release is ready. So with that email, you will get the first chapter of the new book, you'll get appropriate links, I will link a, the trailer to it, you'll get all the information you need about that particular book. I may even throw in some recipes because if you have read book one and book two of a Heart's Journey series, you'll realize that I do hint at particular um, foods that, that that I actually make myself. I'll put in a recipe related to that particular book. So send me an email, that's all you need to do, and I will put you on the email list and you'll get an email whenever a book is released. And I'm, I shoot between six to eight months. Um, it takes me to write a book and get it out there. So definitely do that. The other thing is big news to everyone. Book three is coming out very, very soon. So if you, so you'll see it there on the screen, Heart's Comfort, which is book three in the Heart's Journey series. If you haven't read book one or book two, all the links are in the description box below. Definitely read them as this series builds upon each book. So it's really important that you read book one and book two two before you head into book three. Without further ado, let's make those delicious breaded chicken legs and thighs. Okay, so the very first thing that you need to do is have chicken thighs and chicken legs. And what I have in the bowl is actually our raised chicken. What I did was I took, what I did was I cut off the legs and thighs and then put them in the freezer because I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do or how I was going to process because sometimes I change things up throughout the year. First I'm going to show you how to separate the thigh and the leg. And if you don't have your own, go to the grocery store. You can definitely just do legs or just do thighs, no problem. But for those that butcher their own chickens and keep that meat for your family, um, I'm going to show you how to easily separate them. So the very first thing that you always need is a very sharp knife, a nice clean cutting board. You notice that there is no skin on here and that is because we always take the skin off our birds because we hate plucking. So this is all personal preference. If you go to the store and it has skin on it, no big deal. If you have skin on yours, no big deal. So that to me is just personal preference. The biggest thing here, what I do is I feel for the joint. The joint is right in between the thigh and the leg here. So you kind of look at this triangle and you take your thumb and your index finger and you just start feeling, you'll see, you'll feel, um, you'll feel meat here and then you'll kind of come right in the middle here and you'll feel a joint. We Some people refer this to as a knuckle. And then if you go further down, you'll feel the bone here in between the thigh, but it's more fleshy. So what I'm looking for is this particular joint right here. And when you go like this, you can kind of even um, more feel it. If you flip it over on one, on one side, you can feel it in between your finger right here. That's where you want um, to start making your cut. So a lot of times what I do is just I make a slight cut all the way around the meat, just like this. And 
and this will this will also help you discover how to separate it and you can kind of see the part right here where the knuckle is what I want to do is go a little further and that's exactly where I want to cut is that part right there and is get right in the middle there and that will separate the joints and sometimes if you turn it around it goes a little easier and there you go so you shouldn't be cutting bone you should never be cutting bone if you got the right place you'll have a little bit of a give kind of at the beginning like I did but if you turn it around it should go through easily you're just getting in between that joint and it makes a nice clean cut just like that so that's beautiful I'm going to set these aside because I have a whole bunch of these to do so I'm going to do some more and you can just watch me as I go So now that the chicken's all cut up, I'm just going to place it into the bowl so I can get rid of my cutting board. And so whenever you're dealing with meat, always remember wash everything with soap and water. I'm going to go wash up my hands and then we're going to make the mixture for the breaded chicken. Now I have two lasagna dishes here. These are quite large lasagna dishes. And this one here is a four quart and this one here is a five quart. So they're quite large and as you can see, they're well loved. These lasagna dishes are about 15 years old, used almost daily in this house. So I have two dishes here. You can use whatever you like. Um, the key secret to making these chicken legs so delicious is bird fat. That's right. So I did a whole video on how I make bird fat and render it down. So this is turkey chicken goose fat. Um, you can definitely use the pure form of any of those and duck fat as well. Um, it definitely enhances the flavor. You could use butter in the same method. You, I have used coconut oil to do this, but nothing beats bird fat nothing does so that's one of my secret ingredients to make this so good so the very first thing that I do is I grab a tablespoon of this bird fat just like that and I put it at the bottom of my lasagna dish and I spread it out bird fat really um, goes liquid quite fast at room temperature so I don't bother heating it to melt it because as you can even see here it's already going liquid I'm just gonna grab a little I'm just gonna grab a little bit more so I, I lace the bottom with bird fat and now I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one here. I make this dish about once a month. It's a complete treat in my house. And remember, when the chicken comes out, you will have all these delicious drippings. Do not throw it away because what I do is I take all this wonderful drippings and I put it into soup and oh my word the flavor so none of this is ever wasted so what doesn't get absorbed in the breaded part of it definitely goes into a soup or flavoring let's say over mashed potatoes or something like that so that is the one that is a critical step get those heavily greased
Okay, so the next step is to have two bowls. You want one bowl for the eggs, and you want another bowl a little bit bigger for the flour. Now, I personally like a little bit bigger bowl for the flour, just because you're putting in the chicken and you're moving things about so it doesn't just spill out. So I'm gonna do the flour mixture first. I have about two and a half cups of flour here. This is whole grain. This is freshly milled flour. You can use white flour, um, definitely. If you have whole grain and you prefer white flour, all you need to do is take a sieve and sieve out the fiber. But in this case, whole wheat works just fine for me. Okay, so we need to spice this up because without spices, things are pretty bland. So the very first, one of the most important spices is you grab your salt shaker and I am looking at about a tablespoon of salt. Salt is really critical in here. It enhances flavor and without it, it's just completely boring. And so next you want some pepper and I'm just, you know, I kind of visualize here. I really kind of go by sight on everything that I cook and that's what makes it really hard um, to replicate everything because I learned how to cook by sight, not by measuring everything. So I really try hard to start measuring for you guys, but that's what I'm kind of looking for, for pepper there, a really good, good heavy coating. Um, you're probably about half a teaspoon, okay, in there. The next important spice is paprika, definitely. Um, paprika is really important, and I def I even got a tablespoon, you guys. Clap your hands because I have a measuring utensil. Um, I'm going to do a heaping tablespoon of paprika. And for me, I'm gonna make that a tablespoon and a, I'm gonna make it two tablespoons because that doesn't look about, that looks about right. Two tablespoons of paprika in the mix. The next thing you want to do is some onion powder. I love onion powder, so I'm definitely going to do a tablespoon of onion powder. The next thing that you want to do is some garlic powder. Now I'm going to do a half a tablespoon of garlic of garlic powder. There we go. When you're doing breaded ain't a thing, it can handle a lot of spice. So don't underestimate how much spice you actually need in your mixture to make it taste good. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of basil leaf. There we go. And again, I'm going to do a couple of tablespoons of oregano. And one of my favorite all-time herbs that I'm pretty sure goes good into almost everything is marjoram. And I'm going to do two tablespoons again of marjoram. So that is about it when it comes to the spices. Then what I do is I take a fork and I start mixing it. Now you want to really mix this thoroughly. You don't want to have an area that is more concentrated in salt or paprika or with your basil and oregano and herbs so you really want to mix it up and sometimes I even just take my hand and I will just mix this up thoroughly. I will also grab it and I take a look. Does it look pretty evenly mixed? Um, I should see an even amount of paprika throughout it because that's what really gives it a punch. Now if you love hot stuff, this is a point where you know if you want to add a hot pepper um, flakes to it or something a little more spicy, more kicky, this is the time you want to do it. But some of my family is really sensitive, so paprika is a calmer option, gives it a nice flavor without so much kick. Okay, so it should look like that smells awesome. I know you can't smell it, but it really does. The next step you want to do is the egg. So I'm going to switch my bowls here and I'm gonna put in four eggs. Now, for the amount of chicken that I have, I usually use four eggs.
Okay, so once you got them cracked, give them a really good whip in. You want to make sure that your whites and your yolks are really well whipped. Okay, so that looks really evenly whipped. You don't see um, splotches of egg whites. You don't see any kind of yolk. It's evenly whipped and that's exactly what you wanna see. Okay, so once you got that done, this is the fun part that I like to do. So I have my two bowls here side by side and I have my lasagna dishes right here. What I want to do here is grab is grab my first piece of chicken and I'm going to cover it in this wonderful in this egg. Just like that. So I'm just coating it. And then I grab it and I put it into my flour mixture. And sometimes I just help it along, bury it a bit. Just like that. Now some people double coat these by taking this and dipping it back into your egg. I don't, I don't do that, um, but that's again personal preference, something you can do. Then what I do is I place it in my lasagna dish. So I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to do one lasagna dishes of legs and then I'm going to do one lasagna dish of the thighs. Okay, so now I'm gonna go wash up my hands here and and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that I have my chicken pieces nicely breaded, what I need to do is throw them in the oven. You wanna th put them in the oven at 360 Fahrenheit for about one hour. And the key, very key important thing is here is that they're gonna cook, you're gonna let them cook for 30 minutes. And then at the 30 minute mark, we're gonna pull these out and we are going to base them with some more of that bird fat. And basically that will just crisp up the top here for the last 30 minutes. And it just prevents it from, you know, like having that deep frying effect, it just puts enough oil on top to really um, crisp up this top and give it that extra pizzazz to it, that deliciousness that you really want. And, uh, and it won't take off the coating. So, first of all, let's put, this, let's put these into the oven for 30 minutes at 360 Fahrenheit. Now while those are baking, what I want to do is I want to put a few tablespoons of this bird fat into my pot. 
and I want it melted in this ca case completely because I will be drizzling it over the meat so I definitely don't want it at this particular state I want it completely liquefied and you just got to turn your hot plate on low because this will happen really quickly um, and I'm just eyeing it up. Let's put another tablespoon in there and you can see why I do this as a treat because it uses a lot of this wonderful fat but my kids love it. So I have another tablespoon in here for a total of three tablespoons and that looks about right of what I need. And you're just heating this up lightly. You don't want to bring it to a boil. You just want it liquefied. If you don't use everything here, put it back into your jar because there is no contamination with meat at all. You put this in a clean, clean pot so there's no need to waste even a dribble of this. You see the change here. Um, you got this rich yellowness, but you got this clear bit. And this is about as liquid as you're gonna get. And this is what you need. So I'm gonna just turn off my hot plate here. And I'm just gonna set this aside because I will need this in about 30 minutes. Okay, so take a look at how delicious it is. So what you can see here is you can see the fat starting to get absorbed. You can see the crispiness, but then you see this, this flour topping and that's not very good. You wanna get rid of that. You wanna crisp it right up. This is, this is when you need your bird fat. So all I do is I take it and I just lightly coat each one on top, just like that. And that just seals it. It just makes it so yummy, crisps it up, and uh, and that's my, my little secret in doing this. Plus, you're not using as much as you would if you would be deep frying it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this one off to the side. So you can see it. Okay, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one here. So beautiful, perfect. And then what I'd like to do is just grab my lasagna dish and I'd like to move this fat around. And if I didn't get a certain um, spot, let's say over here, with the fat that I had in my pot, I'll just tip my lasagna dish and some of the hot fat here will come over and I'll just, I'll just baste it on there. Um, and, and use that but now I have this wonderful coating now it's gonna cook for another 30 minutes and what I do is I turn my oven down to 350 now for the last 30 minutes and so beautiful there we go and let's get them back into the oven so now decrease it to 350 and I'm going to put in another 30 minutes and then they will be done. So this is exactly how you want your chicken to look. It's nice and crispy on top. You have some extra um, grease here for some wonderful drippings. It's wonderful at the bottom. Just gonna lift this up, take a look at that. Absolutely delicious. So this chicken is right done. And now it's just time to enjoy it with your family. So thank you so much for watching. And remember, I always love hearing from you. And we'll see you on the next video.